shoot. I was gonna start off this video by uh, knitting while I'm chatting to you, but I picked this up and immediately dropped a bunch of stitches, so we're not doing that today. Hi, I'm Sona, and let's talk about my favorite books that I read in 2023. But first I need to let you know that if you've been keeping an eye out for it, my sci-fi book podcast, which is called the End of the World Book Club, is out now, it is launched. You can find it on your favorite podcast app if everything is going according to plan. It's about apocalyptic and dystopian books. I've got some wonderful guests, including some people you might know, like Joel from Fictional Fates, Lena from Lena Norms, Ariel Bissett. It's been a very long time in the making, so I just wanted to let you know that it is here now. Of course, I can't do a favorite books of the year video without having a look at the story graph wrap to look at the stats. The genres I spent the most time with surprisingly this year, and it'll give you a bit of a taster of what's coming in this video. Literary at the very top with 13 books, then science fiction, historical fantasy, and dystopian. The longest book I read was Babel, 544 pages. The book I spent the least time with was A Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo, read it in a day. And then the most time was spent with Matrix by Lauren Groff, 637 days. That's correct, I started reading it two years ago and I finished it as the last book of the year. I explored the works of 14 new authors. Six of the books I read were part of a series. The moods of the books I read were um, dark, tense, reflective and adventurous. I read 23% nonfiction and 32% of the books I read were in audio, which you're gonna be hearing a lot of. And I'm starting off with the book that was absolutely my book of 2023. I've been reading this book for a year and a half, then I got recommended the audiobook and I raced through the last like two thirds. It is Matrix by Lauren Groff. The audiobook was read by Ajua Endo, who was fantastic. I didn't recognize her voice at first, but you would probably know her from Bridgerton as Lady Danbury. She did incredibly well with the regional accents. It was really dynamic. It was just really fun to listen to. And I basically pitched this book as rebellious nuns. It is vaguely based on the life story of, what's her name? Marie de France, who I think became France's first female poet. It describes her whole life kind of like the life of a saint. If you're into like Lee Bardugo's Shadow and Bone World and you've enjoyed those stories that tell the life of a saint, then I think you would actually enjoy this as well. You follow her entire life, you zoom into certain parts. This book has a lot of what I can only describe as texture. It's not afraid to be a little bit rough, but it is also beautifully, beautifully written. The character when she's young feels like she's kind of being described as what I would imagine Brienne of Tarth to have been like. She's sent to this abbey. It is run terribly. The nuns are starving and she slowly starts taking the power there and taking hold of their destiny. I found it absolutely fascinating. I feel like I'd recommend this to almost anyone, especially if you have at least a vague interest in the Middle Ages. Then the next book I almost want to call a sort of sister novel to Matrix, and it is Lap Vona by Altessa Marshveg. I got to see her at an event. My book was pre-signed, but I got it dedicated, which I was very excited about. I had only ever read my year of rest and relaxation by this author, but when I heard she was doing a, again, medieval story, I was totally drawn in. Now, sort of opposite to Matrix, this actually takes place over one year across four seasons. This is a gross book. If you don't like gross books, this is not for you. I just want to warn you in advance. If you're really into things like Game of Thrones, you'll probably enjoy this. It is like a nasty little Shakespearean tragedy. There is death, there is illness, there is violence. But in essence, it is about a young boy who uh, is involved in the death of the son of a lord. When they bring the body to the lord, the lord of the village goes, I'll just have this boy as my son. He doesn't wanna bother with grief or being sad. He doesn't like being sad. And his life changes. I absolutely adored this. Altessa Moshweg reads the audiobook herself, if that's something they're interested in. I listened to it while I was sewing my Regency dress, which was a fun experience. If you have any more recommendations in a similar vein, please let me know. Also, I feel like this is gonna pop up on uh, lists that say, you know, you'll love this book if you loved Saltburn. So that's another recommendation. Then don't get whiplash. We are going to something totally different. Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I listened to the audiobook read by Ray Porter. I loved The Martian when I first read it. This audiobook actually for Project Hail Mary, I feel like should be the main way you read it. I don't even know how this book works in physical form. If you have read it, let me know without 
any spoilers how they sort of deal with the special audio bit about this. I feel like I have to be quite vague when I describe this book because one of the fun parts is discovering a certain thing. But basically it is about a man who wakes up in space on a spaceship. He doesn't really know why he's there. Then he discovers that he might not be there by his own will, but he is on a mission to save all of humanity. You get the sarcasm that was in The Martian. You get some of the sciencey bits that were in there. I do think when I started listening to it, I was a bit annoyed by how bro-y the main character is, but I got over that quite quickly and I enjoyed this so, so much. I laughed out loud and I would 100% listen to it again. Then I went and finished off the Broken Earth series. So this is number one, the fifth season, but I finished book two and three and finished the trilogy and I consumed this entire series once again in audio. So I only read 32% in audio, but the audiobooks that I listened to just turned out to be some of my favorites of the year. The audio is read by Robin Miles, who is absolutely fantastic. I actually have a full episode of the End of the World Book Club podcast about this series with Joel from Fictional Fates. So we go into a lot more depth than I can do here, but everything you've heard about this series is true. It is fantastic. The world building, I loved so much. You feel in such safe hands with N.K. Jemisin. Also, I realized that I haven't read that many books from the perspective of a mature woman, especially fantasy. Like I am used to reading books with younger main characters. Also, I haven't read that many books where the main characters are mothers. I really enjoyed that. So it is probably more like fantasy than sci-fi, but something about it does feel sci-fi. There are themes of race and climate and refugees. Basically, the world that these characters live in is a world that is constantly ravaged by these planet-destroying climate events. And the main character is part of a group of people who can partly control the earth and use it for good or for bad. But for some of her life, she's had to hide her powers. Her powers can get exploited. She can get thrown out of a community. The story starts off when she finds out that her husband has killed their son because he has also started displaying some of these powers and the husband was not aware that his wife had these powers and he has taken their daughter and is on the run. If you're going to read this series, do not take too long of a pause in between the books. I'd recommend reading them back to back. If you can, you'll just get the most out of the story and also do not Google anything. There are some definitions in the back, but if you Google stuff, you're gonna find spoilers. The next one, I do have two chapters left of it, but it's definitely felt like one of my books of the year, so I'm fine with that. It got recommended to me when I interviewed the director of the new Emily Bronte film, and it is The Bronte Myth by LaCasta Miller. This book is so engaging and so in-depth, but at the same time, also like very easy to read, so it's exact right level of depth. And it is about all the misconceptions that exist about the Bronte sisters, how their lives have been warped and misinterpreted over the years, how their stories have changed and why. Sometimes they were involved in that themselves. Sometimes it was other people changing the story and also how this has changed over time. It's like our society has changed. Our values have changed. What kind of stories we like to hear has changed and that has influenced how we see them over time. I have underlined, I have bookmarked. I'm gonna go through it again once I finished it and write down the bits I want to remember. Obviously you have to have some sort of interest in the Bronte sisters to read this, but you do not need to have read all of their books. Even if you've just seen like two film adaptations, you're probably fine. If you do want to know more about this, I made a whole video about my Bronte pilgrimage where I went on a solo trip to Yorkshire and one of the books I read there was this. If you're into that, definitely go check that out. And then finally, we have Please Do Not Touch This Exhibit by Jen Campbell, who is also one of my friends and a fellow YouTuber. This is a poetry collection that explores the theme of folklore, disability, IVF, and so much more. To me, this probably feels like the most personal thing she's ever written. And it feels like a privilege to be able to read these poems. I got an early copy of this and I read it in one go, but I would actually love to go back and sort of explore this poem by poem. But if you're interested in those themes I mentioned, then you should definitely check this out. Then I also have an honorable mention. It's not 
one of my favorites of the year, but it is one that has stuck by me. I've seen it in lots of people's favorite books of the year videos. It's been really popular on TikTok, so I wanted to give it a quick shout out. I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman, translated by Ross Schwartz. It is really intense and I wouldn't really go around like recommending this to people. I feel like unless I can give them the full pitch and see how they respond to that, because it is about a group of women, including one young girl who have been locked into this cell for I think over a decade. They're underground, there are guards there, but they never interact with the guards. And then something happens that changes everything. Don't really want to reveal it, but it is a story that in the end will just make you question everything. The purpose of life, absolutely fascinating. I don't think I've ever read anything like it. If you wanna have some existential thoughts, this is a great book, but be prepared for what you're getting into basically. I don't think I even mentioned how many books I read. I read 31 books. Usually I do my top 10 favorites, but I feel like when I read 30 books, I wanna have a slightly smaller number of favorites because otherwise I'm picking everything. I think it has been one of the best reading years I've had because I read some really, really good stuff. I should start marking my DNFs on Storygraph. I haven't done that so far. But it was a good year for reading quality and getting more focused on the, the themes and the genres that I know I love. So that's really great. I am planning on having a bigger reading year this year. I want to read 75 books, ideally. There will be a video coming about the books behind me and next to me because I basically tried to pick, you know, the 75 books I'd like to read this year and I put them all here so I can be reminded of them. I hope you enjoyed these recommendations and don't forget to check out the End of the World Book Club podcast as well and I'll talk to you soon. Doei! Thank you.